Hello, my name is Sydney and I am an intern for CRAB and today I will be talking about PQQ or proloquinoline quinone. A little bit of background about this molecule is that it's classified as a B vitamin uh, but is most well known as being a strong antioxidant and redox regulator. Specifically, it protects mitochondria from oxidative stress and free radical species, which can cause a lot of damage to mitochondria and cells. We know that it is really important because it is seen a lot in uh, early development, specifically certain fluids like breast milk, colostrum, a precursor to breast milk, and plasma. And on the right is a image of PQQ at the molecular level. So PQQ is known as being an antioxidant, but in certain uh, environments, it can act as a pro-oxidant. And this is based on the biological environment, uh, whether that be the concentration of PQQ already in the cell or environment, the type of cell, and even the type of organism the cell is in. One study showed differences in how PQQ interacted with its environment based on you know, whether it was an animal model or a human model. One study uh, done in 2015 showed that in human models, below 10 micromolars was mainly an antioxidant, and above 50, uh, it acted as a prooxidant. The prooxidant form was very detrimental because it, could, it led to cell apoptosis via disrupting certain mitochondrial pathways. And furthermore, there is a lot of variation in acceptable, acceptable toxicity levels between different cells. So overall, there's a lot of variation in when PQQ can be helpful or detrimental to the body. And although I did provide certain levels from one study, that was just one. And across the board, there is a lot of just discrepancies. So a little more on PQQ's relationship with mitochondria. PQQ deficiencies have been strongly correlated with fewer mitochondria. And because mitochondria is really important in our metabolism, PQQ supplementation can indirectly improve our metabolism. And this uh, figure on the right shows one study where PQQ was supplemented um, to some cells and not to others. And as you can see, the cell on the left, which was given PQQ, had way more mitochondria than the one on the right. And the mitochondria are the small black dots within the cell. So specifically, PQQ encourages biogenesis or the creation of mitochondria, and that's through activating um, some pathways, specifically the PGC1 alpha expression and CAMP response element binding protein phosphorylation. In terms of brain health, PQQ reacts with n methyl d aspartate receptors, uh, which receive the um, neurotransmitter glutamate in the hippocampus and cortex. Um, that's specifically where PQQ interacts with them. And these receptors are prone to glutamate neurotoxicity, which we know is associated with several neurodegenerative disorders. Um, and PQQ can provide uh, neuroprotection from such toxicity by kind of acting as a regulator and oxidizing these modulatory sites. So they could potentially act as a treatment for such disorders. Um, and some, there are some other pathways that PQQ may be acting on to uh, potentially help such neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, some studies have shown that it prevents the accumulation of damaged alpha-synclein alpha proteins, which are associated with Parkinson's and dementia with Lewy bodies. Also, the aggregation of damaged beta amyloid peptides, which is associated with Alzheimer's. And furthermore, PQQ can act as an anti-inflammatory for traumatic brain injury treatment. So... In terms of dosage and how one consumes PQQ, as mammals, we don't synthesize them, uh, synthesize PQQ endogenously. Uh, so we have to, all of our PQQ has to come from dietary or supplemental sources. Typically, we consume between 0.1 to 1 milligram per day within our diet. Uh, it's not entirely sure if that number is sufficient or not, and if, you know, everyone is naturally just deficient in PQQ. Um, but from our diet, we can get PQQ from kiwi, green peppers, parsley, soybeans, among other sources. Now, self oral supplementation, if you are looking for it to purchase such uh, tablets, they can come 
usually around 40 mil, um, sorry, 20 milligrams per serving, but can go up to 40 milligrams per serving. And this is a little problematic considering that we typically consume only around one milligram per day. And also, as I was mentioning earlier, PQQ can act as a damaging prooxidant. So more research on the appropriate levels of PQQ supplementation uh, would be really appropriate to do, especially because these companies are uh, selling PQQ at such high levels to, um, compared to what we normally consume. So just a word of caution, uh, when buying PQQ supplements, maybe stray away from those that claim their extra strength um, because they might actually be doing detriment to your body. So kind of to reiterate what I've been saying, some future research with PQQ, because it is a very promising supplement, um, is to find the appropriate dosages uh, when taking uh, oral supplementation uh, and you know, finding the effects of PQQ on specific cells, especially in the brain, because they can be used as alternative treatments for such neurodegenerative diseases. And then also exploring more of these pathways between PQQ and specific uh, ailments. And these are my references. Thank you for watching.